ProveLab is a multidisciplinary student-led organization, new to Cal Poly this year, and we are building the world's fastest solar car. My name is Reese Haslam, and I'm the Aerodynamics co-team lead. The solar car is being designed to break the national highway speed limit of 65 miles an hour, just on pure solar power alone. This solar car project is uh, unique because um, we're not building a car for you know these sort of ultra long distance solar car competitions that are very common for universities. Cars for uh, the American Solar Challenge, which is essentially you know these thousand mile long races where the design is highly regulated. There's a lot of restrictions. There's a lot of additional sort of subsystems that you need, like uh, you have a battery. You need to sort of beef up the car to go over cattle grids and stuff like that. So sort of the nature of our project is very different because we just need to break the record, you know? That's exciting because it allows us to um, sort of take out a lot of the internal structure and all of the sort of unnecessary components that we don't need and just go in a straight line for a mile and break the record. And we don't really have to make any concessions to um, what we want the aerodynamics to be. This can be a, you know, a supremely aerodynamic car. Basically the most important factor in solar car in increasing the top speed and the efficiency of the solar car is just designing the car to be very sleek and aerodynamic and very low drag. That's essentially our job and we get to make a lot of the big decisions which is nice and sort of just work with all the other subsystems and other engineering teams to make the, the design come together. The amount of power that we have to work with is very limited. We're talking about power on the order of you know just a few kilowatts which is essentially how much power you use to run a, a toaster or a microwave and you know we're essentially trying to take that amount of power and go 65 miles an hour. So that puts an extra importance on aerodynamics because every little extra bit of, of, of drag and inefficiency that you, you can design out of the vehicle, that's, you know, you're, you're going a little bit faster. Full-size vehicle will be quite large, actually. Um, this is just a quarter-scale model that's going in the wind tunnel. The full-scale car will have um, basically over 100 square feet of solar panel area. The model is mounted upside down the wind tunnel because the apparatus that we have for holding models comes down from the ceiling. And so if we did have it right side up, the arm that comes down and holds the model would be subjected to more of the free stream flow. And in general, you just want the strut to have as little of an influence as possible. Um, so early on in the design, we decided to invert the model and the airflow doesn't really care. Gravity has a negligible effect on what the air is doing. The model is made of primarily carbon fiber composite parts. All that means is that carbon fiber um, parts are very lightweight, extremely high strength uh, material. And it's actually a bit unorthodox to be making scale wind tunnel models out of carbon fiber. There are some challenges with getting the parts to, um, to match up to the exact shape that you design them to be. The wind tunnel is a facility for testing the aerodynamics of scale models. How it works is it just, we use a big fan to pull air in, in our case, from uh, several vents in the ceiling, and it goes into an inlet section where it essentially gets straightened out and the airflow gets cleaned up. It gets contracted and speeds up. It goes into a test section, that's where you do all your, your data acquisition, and then gets you know, gently expanded at the back.
important to measure the forces acting on the wind tunnel model. Most solar cars, and in this solar car is no exception, is they're essentially just giant wings. And so we really want to be careful that we design the car not to, not to lift off the ground and, and start to fly. So what we do in the wind tunnel is we test the scale model, we record all the, the forces and moments, and then we take that data, compare it back to our computer simulations, say, okay, how good are, are the numbers coming out of these, these computer runs? And from that, we can, we can sort of determine if we move on with that, um, with that approach, or if maybe there's something that happened in the real world that we're not modeling properly. So um, yeah, all the members of the Proof Lab Aero team are just getting so much out of it, you know? So much experience that you really, um, you really wouldn't get from, from any of your classes or anything like that. We're really pushing very hard to finish the design of the aerodynamics, because as soon as we can do that, and the sooner we can make the, the shell of the car and go from there. You know, you can take the solar panels that are on your roof and put them on a car, and you can break the speed limit. So that, that, that means something. 